five Filipino volcanoes are waking up at the exact same time. Scientists are shocked because this has never happened before in recorded history, and what's causing it could reshape the entire Pacific Ring of Fire. Picture Mount Mayon, Tal, Bulusan, Canleon, and Hibok Hibok, five deadly giants scattered across different islands, all suddenly showing signs of life within weeks of each other. Steam vents opening, ground swelling, earthquakes rattling communities that haven't felt tremors in decades. This isn't coincidence. This is a geological nightmare that has experts scrambling for answers. The Philippines sits on one of the most dangerous volcanic zones on Earth, but these five volcanoes have never synchronized their activity like this. Each one has its own deadly history. Taal killed 1,300 people in 1911, Mayon buried entire towns in 1814, and Hibok Hibok wiped out 500 people in 1951. Now they're all stirring at once, suggesting something massive is happening deep beneath the islands. But here's what's terrifying scientists. Underground magma chambers that were thought to be separate might actually be connected by hidden pathways. If one erupts, it could trigger a domino effect that turns the entire archipelago into a volcanic war zone. Are we watching the countdown to the Philippines' worst natural disaster? Or has it already begun? April 2025. The FIVO LCS Command Center in Quezon City is already running on high alert when the first wave of seismic alarms hits before dawn. At 5.51 a.m., Canleon's seismic network records a sudden cluster of volcanic earthquakes, over 60 in a single morning. Within minutes, the monitoring dashboard flashes red, data feeds from Negros Island spiking with ground shaking and gas emissions. By 6.47 a.m., Canleon erupts, sending a plume more than four kilometers into the sky. Fivio LCS upgrades the alert level to three, and the message goes out. Evacuate five barangays, watch for Lahar. Local government units are notified in less than 20 minutes. But Canleon isn't alone. As engineers scramble to validate the readings, Bulusan sensors in Sorsagon start showing a swarm of volcano tectonic quakes, nearly 300 in four days. Steam and gas venting from the summit reach 400 meters high. The sulfur dioxide output jumps to more than 1,000 tons per day. Within a week, FIVOL CS raises Bulusan's alert level as well, warning of possible sudden explosions. Taal's network, meanwhile, records a surge in tremors and gas flux. On May 3rd, the alert level quietly moves to two. By the end of the month, all three volcanoes are on heightened watch. The command center's main screen now glows with overlapping warning banners, each color-coded for urgency. Data bandwidth strains under the load. Real-time seismic, gas, and satellite feeds pouring in from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Staff work in overlapping shifts, led by FIVO LCS director, Dr. Teresito Bacolcol, and senior volcanologist, Ma Antonia Bornas. Each volcano has its own crisis team, but the lines between them blur as the signals multiply. Situation reports are drafted, revised, and pushed out to local officials and the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council. Within hours, evacuation orders are issued in Negros, curfews declared, and flights diverted from ash-laden airspace around Iloilo. The Department of Health circulates air quality warnings as sulfur dioxide levels spike. Social media fills with conflicting advisories, tourism boards downplaying risk, local officials demanding clarity. Vivo LCS issues three overlapping bulletins in five days, each one more urgent than the last. Amid the chaos, the command center's dashboard becomes the nerve center of the nation. Every spike in seismicity, every plume, every tremor is logged and relayed in real time. The sense of urgency is relentless. Inside the control room, experts debate evacuation radii, weigh the risk of false alarms, and field calls from anxious mayors and national leaders. The pressure is unyielding. One mistake could cost thousands of lives. As the alerts cascade from one volcano to the next, 
it's clear that the Philippines is facing an unprecedented threat, one that tests the limits of science, government, and the resilience of its people. Inside Fivoalki's headquarters, the pressure is unrelenting. By mid-April, the operations floor is packed, phones ringing, screens flickering with color-coded alerts, staff hunched over keyboards in 12-hour rotations. Each volcano demands its own crisis team, but the lines blur as warnings multiply and the clock resets with every new seismic spike. The director, Dr. Teresito Bacolcol, moves from station to station, conferring with senior volcanologist Ma Antonia Bornis about the next bulletin. Every decision is scrutinized. How wide to draw the evacuation zones, how soon to escalate the alert, and whether to send families fleeing in the middle of the night. Resource strain hits fast. Canleon's eruption pulls field teams from Negros, but as Bulusan's unrest intensifies, staff scramble to cover Sorsagon, hundreds of kilometers away. Some engineers sleep in the office, eating instant noodles between shifts. The data servers strain under the flood of real-time seismic and gas readings. When tail's tremors spike, the command center is forced to triage, prioritizing the most urgent signals, sometimes at the cost of slower updates for other volcanoes. The logistics of mass evacuation grow more complicated by the hour. In Negros, nearly 87,000 people are ordered to leave their homes, but local officials debate how far is far enough. Some barangay captains argue for a tighter radius, worried about false alarms and the cost of moving elderly residents. Others demand wider zones, haunted by memories of the 1991 Pinatubo disaster and the thousands who didn't make it out in time. In Sorsagon, the debate turns heated as Bulusan's gas output jumps above a thousand tons per day. Air quality warnings go out, but not everyone heeds them. A mother in Irisin refuses to leave her house, afraid looters will take what the ash doesn't destroy. Her neighbor packs up and drives north, children coughing in the back seat. Conflicting messages ripple through social media. Tourism boards post reassurances, eager to protect the summer travel season. FIVOLCS staff field angry calls from resort owners near Mayon, who fear evacuation orders will ruin livelihoods. Meanwhile, local mayors demand clarity. Is this a false alarm, or do they risk repeating the deadly mistakes of the past? Dr. Bornis drafts an internal memo warning that data blind spots, caused by old equipment and budget delays, could cost lives if the signals are misread. The command center's corridors echo with exhaustion and urgency, as every staff member knows that one missed warning could mean disaster. In the background, the memory of past tragedies lingers. Survivors from Teol and Hibok Hibok call in, anxious, asking if it's time to run. Some keep emergency bags by the door, unable to sleep through the night. Five OLCS staff, battered by weeks of crisis, weigh each advisory with the knowledge that the nation is watching and waiting for the next alarm. A magnitude 7.4 earthquake shakes Mindanao in early 2025, sending a ripple of concern through the scientific community. Within days, seismic networks across the archipelago pick up a surge of volcanic tremors, not just at Kanlaun, but at Bulusan and Teal as well. The timing is uncanny. Data scientists at FIVOLCS begin overlaying quake records and volcanic alert levels, searching for patterns. What they see is unsettling. Clusters of volcanic earthquakes and gas spikes appear to cascade from one volcano to the next, as if some hidden force is linking them beneath the surface. Dr. Elias Navarro, an independent geophysicist, pours over the magnetotelluric survey results published in March. He notes a corridor of anomalous electrical signals stretching between Canleon and Bulusan, and faint echoes near Tal. Navarro's hypothesis is bold. Deep within the Earth, ancient magma channels, long presumed isolated, may be connected by thread-like pathways. If so, a disturbance in one chamber could send pressure waves through the crust, priming neighboring volcanoes for eruption. He points to the Mindanao quake as the possible trigger, a massive stress jolt that may have unclogged blocked vents and set magma in motion across the region. Satellite radar images add to the mystery. 
ground swelling appears almost simultaneously at Can Leon and Bulusan, with smaller pulses near Taiol. Gas emission readings spike in concert. Can Leon's sulfur dioxide output soars past 3,000 tons a day, while Bulusan's jumps above 1,100. The sequence is too orderly for comfort. Navarro shares his findings in a late-night video call with Fivio LCS analysts, who remain cautious but intrigued. They agree to collaborate on a joint study with the USGS, aiming to map the suspected corridors in unprecedented detail. The stakes are enormous. If these volcanoes are truly linked, even loosely, a major eruption at one could set off a chain reaction, overwhelming evacuation plans and disaster protocols. Inside the command center, the debate grows heated. Some volcanologists warn against overinterpreting the data, arguing that each volcano's plumbing system is unique. Others, haunted by the synchronized unrest, urge immediate upgrades to seismic and gas monitoring networks. The only certainty is uncertainty. As the days tick by and the ground continues to tremble, the idea of a single force stirring beneath the islands refuses to die. For the scientists on the front lines, every new signal could be the first domino in a disaster with no precedent. Seismic tomography scans conducted across Luzon and the Visayas reveal a complex but unmistakable pattern. Each volcano sits atop its own isolated zone of partial melt, with no continuous low-velocity corridors linking them beneath the surface. Beneath Tall, for example, the melt pocket rises from the mantle wedge and stops well short of Mayon's deep reservoir over 300 kilometers away. The same is true for Can Leon and Bulusan. Each has a distinct, vertically-oriented magma system, separated by thick, unbroken crust. These findings are echoed in the latest magnetotelluric surveys. While some anomalies hint at deep electrical conductors, none trace a path between the major volcanic centers. The much-discussed thread-like channels remain hypothetical, unconfirmed by imaging or geophysical mapping. Geochemical evidence points in the same direction. Isotope analyses of erupted rocks, strontium, neodymium, and lead, show clear divergence. Taal's magmas carry signatures of sediment-rich subduction, while Can Leon's bear the mark of oceanic crust melting. Bulusan's products are chemically distinct again, with trace elements and volatile contents that don't match its supposed neighbors. Even the gas emissions tell separate stories. Taal's high CO2 to SO2 ratio signals a unique hydrothermal system, unlike the sharply sulfur-rich plumes from Bulusan and Can Leon. These chemical fingerprints act like volcanic DNA, leaving little doubt that each system has its own origins and evolutionary path. Independent geophysicists like Dr. Liza Mercado have been vocal about the limits of current data. She points to the lack of coherent ground deformation patterns in GPS and INSAR measurements. When Tal inflates, the swelling remains tightly localized. No corresponding uplift appears at Mayon or Bulusan. The same holds for seismicity. Earthquake swarms cluster beneath each volcano, with no evidence of migration or domino-like triggering across the archipelago. Mercado argues that the apparent synchronization could be a mirage, the product of regional tectonic stress, especially after large earthquakes, rather than any shared magma plumbing. The debate is far from settled. Some researchers, intrigued by the coincident timing, call for expanded monitoring and more sensitive instruments. But the prevailing interpretation remains cautious. The Philippine volcanoes, for all their surface drama, appear to be independent actors, each responding to its own internal pressures and the broader tectonic forces that shape the archipelago. As the scientific community weighs the evidence, the possibility of a true multi-volcano eruption chain remains, for now, a distant and unproven threat. In the shadow of the volcanoes, entire communities are uprooted overnight. In Negros, 57,563 people find their lives upended as Can Leon's ash darkens the sky and the ground shakes beneath their feet. More than 3,900 are forced from their homes, clutching what little they can carry. Old photographs, sacks of rice, 
a child's school bag. Evacuation centers fill quickly, families sleeping on woven mats, waiting for news that never seems to come. The air hangs heavy with the smell of sulfur and fear. On the slopes of Bulusan, farmers walk their fields at dawn to find crops buried under a layer of ash. Months of work and an entire season's harvest lost in a single night. The Department of Agriculture tallies the damage, over 3 million US dollars gone in less than a month. For many, there is no insurance, only the hope that the next eruption spares what little remains. Children wake to the sound of distant explosions and the constant hum of helicopters. Some refuse to sleep, haunted by nightmares of the 1991 Pinatubo disaster, or stories told by grandparents who survived Hibok Hibok in 1951. Health workers report a rising tide of anxiety, recurring panic attacks, sleepless nights, and a sense of dread that settles like ash on every conversation. Emergency bags stay packed by the door. In the chaos, neighbors share food and water, but trust in official warnings frays with every conflicting message. For those living at the foot of these restless mountains, survival is measured not just in days, but in the memories they carry and the losses they are asked to endure. By early June, the warnings are sharper than ever. FIVO LCS analysts circulate a confidential projection. If current unrest patterns hold, the odds of at least two major eruptions in 2026 are the highest in decades. Yet the resources needed to monitor, prepare, and respond are stretched thin. Internal memos reveal a bitter fight over the next year's disaster budget. Some lawmakers argue for cuts, insisting the agency is crying wolf. Others demand more, pointing to the mounting evidence and the cost of inaction. At the same time, tourism boards from Batangas to Albay Lobby behind closed doors, warning that stricter alert levels will devastate their summer bookings. Resort owners threaten lawsuits if evacuations are called before peak season. The Department of Finance hesitates, torn between economic recovery and public safety. Policy meetings drag into the night. 5 EOLCS leadership pleads for new seismic arrays and real-time gas analyzers, but procurement lags as Congress debates every line item. A leaked draft of the 2026 forecast lands on a senator's desk. It warns of potential unrest at up to five volcanoes simultaneously. The document is quietly shelved, deemed too alarming for public release. Meanwhile, local officials beg for clearer guidance. Mayors from Negros and Sorsagon demand to know whether to prepare for another round of mass evacuations or to reassure anxious residents that the worst is over. The country stands at a crossroads. Do leaders invest in unglamorous prevention, risking political backlash and economic pain? Or do they gamble on hope, downplaying the threat and waiting for clearer signs? The next move could mean the difference between chaos and survival. But as the ground continues to tremble, no one is willing to call the danger past. The clock is running, and the choices only get harder from here. In 2025, five of the Philippines' most dangerous volcanoes, Mayon, Tal, Bulusan, Kanlaon, and Haibok Hibok, showed simultaneous unrest for the first time in recorded history. Official PHY FIVO LCS alerts documented a rapid escalation between April and May, with over 57,000 people affected and nearly 4,000 displaced. Historical records remind us that these same volcanoes have each taken hundreds or thousands of lives in past eruptions. Yet, as scientists debate whether a hidden connection links their magma systems, no conclusive evidence has emerged. Tomography and geochemical analyses point to isolated melt zones, even as unusual seismic activity sparks new questions. The cause of this synchronized awakening remains unsolved, and the risk forecast for 2026 is still under review. What is clear, the Philippines remains at the center of the Pacific Ring of Fire, and the lessons of 2025 have reshaped how authorities and communities prepare for what comes next.